All right, I have a iPad in for repair and I'm going to do a full process um, of the uh, repair, starting from the very beginning, uh, going through the things that I use for this repair. Um, grab one more thing here. So, uh, what I have here is just a basic Phillips. iPads are nice, unlike iPhones, you don't need a whole bunch of different uh, bits to do the repair job. Um, I use just a basic razor blade. I have a lot of these just around the office. Um, uh, rare time, you'll need a spudger. Some people really like these opening tools. You won't see me use this that much. Um, a pair of tweezers, don't need to be anything fancy. I don't use my soldering ones. Um, when I do this, uh, a pair of good little scissors, a cloth for cleaning. I always have a bag of fresh ones. I have primer in this bottle and I have isopropyl in this bottle. And then I have Tessa tape. And then I cut a little plastic playing card to use as a battery disconnect tool. Uh, lastly, I have a hot plate underneath my desk right here. Um, that's set to 80 degrees, and I'll be using that to warm up the adhesive on the iPad. When I warm it up, um, I was told a better way of doing it is not face down, because the glass dissipates the heat quick, and you'll have to keep going to the heat, off the heat. I put it on the back casing side, and that retains more heat, and you have to heat it up less um, throughout the process. So. One good time heating it on the hot plate, you should be able to remove the screen. This one, we just have one little crack here. Uh, it is a fully functional iPad. And uh, we're just going to go ahead and get this replaced. It does get a little tricky when it's super smashed. Um, this one will be more straightforward. We'll try and warm it up and remove this all in one, one go. So I'll put this down the hot plate. All right, about five minutes on the hot plate is time that works for me. If you're doing this without a hot plate, you can use a heat gun. Um, I don't like it as much, personally. Less controlled, less uniform heat. Um, another thing that I'll use is these large playing cards. And basically, I'm just getting that started. And I'll get a corner in there, a little ISO. You don't want to use too much ISO because iPads use LCDs. LCDs have a backlight, and if you get too much isopropyl um, in there, you can actually get some staining on the LCD. So I should probably grab a fresh card here, but it's working the trick. Don't want to go in too deep. Uh, on this one, the LCD is separate from the um, digitizer which is nice and uh, less risk there, but you kind of want to just practice and, and pretend that this is an iPad Air 2 and that um, if you go in too deep, you could damage the display. So kind of watching, it's more controlled if you can get in this whole side like that and move along. You also have more resistance because it's more adhesive grabbing the card. But I find if you're just using a little bit of the corner, um, it can be a little bit um, easy to slip and slide. Oops. I think I'm going to get a fresh card here. You know what? I'll just snip this. So as you can see, my card can go right under there on this model um, between the display and the digitizer. Just a reasonable amount. You'll notice that with the heat and the ISO, it'll slide much easier. And if it starts to really stick, like we're getting close to, then it probably is time to go back on the heat. Don't want to really have to fight it. So now I've got this whole portion up. Like so. And I like to just put something under there 
um, because as I'm heating this up, it's going to soften this adhesive and it's going to want to grab again and kind of bind back down. And it won't be as strong sitting there, but you'll still have to kind of go and lift it again. So just to avoid that, I just prop it up with uh, something that's available, something that's clean, um, so it's not going to get on the LCD. And um, yeah, we'll put it back on the hot plate again. Okay, now back off the hot plate. Get my card in there again. Start with a little bit of ISO. And it just cruises when it's nice and warm. Oops. Notice I kind of have my fingernail underneath, just keeping it it's a little bit of upward pressure. I'm not really pulling super hard or anything. And now on this model, you have cables on this side, right about there, uh, for the digitizer. And on this, since I'm replacing the screen, it doesn't matter that much, but again, just practicing, not going in too deep, and pretending that you're just removing the screen all in one piece without cracking it. Because if you have to replace a battery or go in for a charging port, or we're doing a board repair, uh, you don't wanna be going in too deep and damaging um, the cables or cracking the screen. So uh, anytime removing the screen, we wanna try and practice removing it in one piece. Um, okay, so right here we can see we've got a couple of straggling uh, things of adhesive and I'll just snip those so they're not drawing on me, pulling against me. So back at the crack here, I'll have to use my blade again, most likely. Put that, we'll scrap it in here. Just to pull that portion back up. Give it an ISO. And we're under it. Turn the corner. At the bottom, you have Wi Fi flexes. Uh, they are more recessed, I find, on the later years of these iPads, and not really concerned. On early years, they were a real issue, and it was really hard to. Uh, and they were like adhered to the back of the screen. So it was really hard to remove them or remove the screens without damaging them. It's quite annoying. Back through here. You obviously you want to stay well below this home button here to avoid nicking the uh, cable or the home button itself. And then we'll just lightly lift this up. Opens like a book. And here's the cables I was talking about. So one, two, this is an iPad six generation, seventh generation, eight and nine, it's just one of these. Um, five and before that, there's two, and they're all on this side. These ones with separate digitizers, they're all on this right-hand side. Um, yeah, so I usually use something, I have like this pen spudger and elastic bin here. I'll prop it up, keep it nice and, uh, upright and this little foam okay now we have four Phillips screws holding the LCD These ones are hidden by a little bit of adhesive up here, or a little bit of tape. I just push right through it and grab them. You can also go with your tweezers and you know lift, lift that tape out of the way. But as you can see, this is just <laughs> more time consuming, right? So all it is, just a little cover. No practical purpose at all. And there's the fourth one. I uh, notice that the screw is kind of falling off there. I'll take, I have these little magnets I put on my little office light and I'll just literally rub the tip of the screwdriver and it's just a magnetic pad so it's fighting it. And then it's much more magnetic. All right. Okay. 
Next, these corners all have a little bit of glue. So I get my blade in there. And if it's really fighting you, again, just warm it up. The adhesive will uh, soften the more you heat it up. So I'm gonna put this down on the hot plate just for a second. All right, a little bit of heat. Uh, I still have the device on at this point, so I can see. Uh, if you're stressing this LCD too much, you're gonna see it right away. Um, so there we go. Just a careful pry. Careful pry. Some of these are clearly more stuck down than others. So this side came up nice. I might. There we go. That one's still stuck. I'm just gonna get this kind of more out of my way. This one's very stuck, which is not normal. There we go. There we go. So normally I'm have my head right in there too, and it makes it easier. I'm trying to just stay as far back as I can and, and show the process um, clear for the camera. So there, if I just move my stuff out of the way, then I can carefully, without stressing this cable, lay that down, grab my Phillips. This is a battery connector. Now, unlike on iPhones and some iPad models, you can't just unclip it. So that's what I use this for. I cut a little V in here, and if you're looking, it's gonna go on either side of that screw hole like this. I'm just gonna go down and lightly in. If you're getting a whole bunch of resistance don't just force it in that's all you need to do to get that to disconnect the battery and if we need to check then we can go and hit the power button and if you remember it was on and now it's off lay that back down and we'll just go and take these three off here one two three and then this plate stays with the cable for the LCD. You can take it off, but it every time on a, every iPad, I feel like from like the Air 1 up to the 5 and 6, this will stay on here. And I leave it because when you go to put it back down, you literally just line up these screw holes and it just pops back on. So it makes it nice and easy. All right, I'm back. So yeah, once I take this off, I'll just temporarily set it to the side here. Again, we have some random tape just covering this home button flex. So with the tweezers, just whoops, grab that. Stick to the side, these tweezers are not great. Pull that little tab up right here towards the bottom. And then you can literally just slide that out. Okay, there's a little bit of adhesive stuck down right here, just carefully pulling that up. And then you've got two connectors for the digitizer right here. And just like that, you're disconnected from the screen. Now the next thing that I'll do, I'll put this back on the hot plate because we're gonna remove this home button to transfer to the new screen. So I'm gonna put down the hot plate, 
and I don't need to cut the video here because while it's warming up, what I do is I take my razor blade and I go around these edges and we're going to clean up all the adhesive off of here. See, it comes off quite nicely like this. I'm not using ISO at this point because we actually want to just try and uh, avoid it from being all goopy and liquid because it comes up easier like this and is much quicker uh, at this, this point. A nice fresh blade is easiest. So I'm going to grab one. Uh, just because any little nick in the blade surface itself is not going to pick up um, the glue. So let's see what I missed by using a used blade there. Oh, not too much. It wasn't a terrible blade. Um, yeah, so when you're angling this, you know, you're not completely like this. You're just kind of 45 to the uh, surface. A little bit of light pressure, but keeping it in control. Bracing, keeping your palm down helps as well. When you come to something like this, I just nicked the adhesive on there. That's nothing that's going to damage the uh, Wi-Fi flex. If you are too tilted this way, you can nick this and damage it. So you kind of want to then go up 45 on this area too. And I'll, you'll see I'm kind of pushing with my thumb and bending this blade. And that allows me to get that little, little small bit there come across here same thing you'll see when I get to something like this I lift up and push and bend same thing here my thumb you'll see is pushing down again turn it around Okay, and now we've made a full circle. At this point, just check this corner one time. At this point, we can grab our ISO. I tilt the iPad up on its side. Put a little ISO up on there. Like so. Grab my cloth. And I kind of double it up. And then my fingernail is kind of riding this little raised edge. Oh, it needs a little bit more. I can still see some residue up there. And we just want this to be as clean as possible. This is going to be the mating surface, of course, for the new adhesive. And one thing that separates us and uh, other repair shops from uh, some of the DIYers or uh, less experienced repair technicians is the, this prep and process um, because the problem that you see a lot of the time with iPads uh, is the screen lifting away not using you know enough well not prepping enough and not using good enough adhesive to secure the screen back to the housing so this is a nice clean frame. Perfect. Okay, I'm gonna set this aside. And I'm gonna grab my screen, my digitizer I should say. There's a little bit of glue on these little brackets. So I just go and slide under here carefully and slowly supporting with this right here. I'm under that one. And again, nice and slow under here. If I were to slip, you could hit something uh, for the home button here. And you can't replace these home buttons and retain touch ID. So you really want to avoid damage, damaging them. You can replace them and get home button function, but if you want to read fingerprints, then you can't. Okay, so I've lifted that up. ISO is my friend. Should be yours as well. 
a little ice under there. The ice on heat allows me to just really carefully lift this up. This is another good time to use a spudger and just kind of wobble underneath. Okay, so this was pretty stuck down and I'm not gonna force it or anything. I'm just gonna put a little bit more ISO under there. We're gonna come at it in this angle because if I come at it at this angle and I'm not quite right, you can damage that. If I come in at this angle, it's foolproof. I can slip and slide. A right, little bit of wobble, not prying. I'm just kind of working my way under there. And then once you get to here, you're free. Okay. Good. There we go. And what I do, this LCD has been exposed to some, some dust, but just to avoid any more, I just temporarily put this broken screen over top of it like this and set it to the side again. That just prevents um, more uh, fingerprints, potential, or dust, glass, that sort of thing. Just makes our cleanup later a little bit easier. So now that I have just the home button, I'm gonna get this all prepped and ready to mount to the new screen. So we can see this little bit of glue that Apple puts on the outside. Just removing that. And remember that, because we're gonna replicate that again when we mount the button to the new one. A piece there as well. Then what I do, so notice that I, I pull this button just lightly out of the way and hold just the bracket. If you press the button down and press to hold while you do this, you can lose this little black nipple, we call it. Hopefully the camera picks this up well enough. And that will prevent it from clicking properly and it will actually change the distance from the bracket to the button. Um, and that's another real common failure. So I have a customer walking up right now, so I'm gonna pause right about here. But basically I'm gonna just take off this old adhesive really carefully, just lightly sawing at these um, pieces of adhesive. I'll pause there. All right. Okay, so I figured I'm just gonna zoom in for a second, make sure that we can see that little black nipple is what I'm talking about. Okay. All righty. The other benefit of pulling this out of the way is if I were to slip, I just hit my finger and I'm fine with that. <laughs> I'm just kidding. You don't want to hit your finger and don't blame me if you hit your finger. You want to be really careful, but we're just minimizing damage potential um, issues with the repair by just pulling that out of the way and also choosing, you know, how you, uh, which direction you go to. Like here, it makes more sense for me to go from this way because See that like slip? There's nothing there. If I was going the other way and I slip, you know, there's <laughs> everything to do with this home button in the way. Okay, so happy with that. Again, ISO's my friend. A little bit of ISO on there. And wipe it with the cloth. As clean as I can get it. Okay, that's good. Next step is primer. So I can bring back my housing. I also need the button for this. And I need a fresh Q-tip. So again, I use 3M primer and I just have it in this little squeeze bottle. Makes application really simple. And I'm going to just prime my mating surface. This really helps the adhesive bind and stay bonded. Um, you will hardly be able to tell if 
you were to reopen this, that it's ever been uh, resealed because the Tessa tape we use with this uh, primer makes a really, uh, really strong seal. Some people will use B7000 and just goop it on there. Um, I'm not a real believer in that. I think that's a little bit messy, in my opinion. Uh, oops. So the home button I want to prep as well. Let's grab a little bit. Like so. And at this point, I'm going to grab my new replacement screen. <clears throat> for that is because this is also going to be an area where we're, we're mating a new um, adhesive to. Okay, so this little black ring is currently on my existing home button. So we can actually, oops, I'm just trying not to scratch the paint as I try and get rid of this. Jeez. All right. We can get rid of this. This little um, ring is already this white part right here on this one. That, again, is crucial for spacing, kind of like that black nipple. You want all these to be um, just as they were. I prefer to use the original one because you know the spacing is going to be perfect for the button. Um, as opposed to the one included with the screen there. So you don't want to double up the spacers and you don't want to leave one out because it uh, messes up the uh, end result. Okay, now I take my Tessa tape out of the roll and I lay it across like that. I have these nice little curved scissors cut across there. This is four or five millimeter Tessa. Um, and an extra like two millimeters from whatever this is would be absolutely perfect, but uh, that wasn't an option. So what I have is two millimeter Tessa. I have right here. So I basically just patch in that last little bit. I want to use all the mating surface because like I say, the difference with how I'm doing this and how shops that are really taking pride in this process or doing this is making sure that things are going to stay adhered and solid and you're never going to you know, have a sunken home button or an issue in that way. So then we can just peel these off. Now we're going to line this up and just get this out of the way. Crowding. Okay. So what I do is I kind of just lightly lift this up and I push my... Oh, look at that. We're missing the little black nipple. And I don't know exactly at what point that happened. That's unfortunate. But that means that we can uh, go over what we do about resolving that. So, look, the end of the world. I have spare buttons. This is a really common problem, so I keep these spare buttons for that reason. button has a good nipple. Normally I do this under my microscope 
because I have a microscope and it makes it easier. But basically what I'm going to do, I am going to go under the gold captain tape with a blade. And to be clear, we're sacrificing this home button, this other one. You can also use, if you have a volume flex um, from an iPhone, iPad, anything like that, you can also use the nipple from those. Okay, I'm going to grab some better tweezers for this point too. Get that out of the way and I'm getting another phone call. Okay, so I'm going to pause with this. Um, I'm going to again use my primer and now that I have my new little nipple here, prime that. Just want this to stick nicely onto there. Like so. Okay, so yeah, that does happen. You try and avoid it by not pressing down the button, like I said, uh, but it, it's, it's gonna happen. Okay, then I use this pair of tweezers to line this up here, hold it down, and I'm getting like my face right down and looking for the positioning you want this metal to line up with that black dot. So I am like at desk level here. I'm just triple checking my positioning. Sticking it down. Another customer here, so pause. Alrighty. So at this point, buttons lined up and in position. And we just check that the clicking is proper. Awesome. Now, I'm going to just lift up this plastic cover off the screen and stick down this. Put the plastic cover back down. Lift this up. Stick it down. B7000 now. Again, I'm going to put it right here. And we're just replicating what Apple did. And that goes onto the back of the glass and onto the top of the bracket and covers the side. And you want it to be a controlled amount. Not too sloppy. So there we go. Maybe a little bit much there, so I'll just pull a little bit off. Okay. Screen is now prepped. So we can start reassembling our iPad. So I will grab my housing. And we'll line these cables up. Now, when I'm lining them up, you kind of get used to it. Um, but when I do it, I'm basically trying to just, without pressing down, I mean, you get it close as you can by eyeballing it, right? But then, like, if I'm too far back, I'll kind of, like, lightly just move until I kind of feel it's in the right position. And then I'll click it down. You'll kind of... As you slide it around lightly, you'll kind of feel when 
this lines up inside of there and kind of and then you just kind of click it in um, if you're you know pressing down and uh, not in the right spot you can really mash up those um, pins and you want to definitely avoid doing that and causing yourself more trouble oops careful okay so we'll just lift that little bracket up Push in the home button, clip it back down. At this point, I'll throw this in my e-waste bin. It served its purpose. Take the screen. Again, of course, this is when your battery needs to be disconnected the most. Because if you're general line AP connection that's where people do the damage they bridge connections and uh, do board damage pull this out grab our battery screw put that in at this point I'll hold the power button we want this to boot up we fully assemble we want to test it but I do want to get this bracket held in place so that the connections don't come loose on me so it's booting up now I don't need to re-glue these corners they're screwed in I think it's overkill that they were ever glued in the first place um, previous generations before the six they weren't glued and there's no problem with that um, so we're going to put these massive screws back in and that's going to hold it in place. So at this point, just let it boot up and we'll test that everything's working correctly. The last thing we want to do is seal this up nice and tight and then have an issue with the um, screen. So click, click, one button is working. And I like to take an app, go edit home screen. Oops. And we'll just drag it around. And just make sure that it is good. And put it back. Done. Looks good to me. Okay. Open it back up. Put our corner screws back in. On the iPad 6, these screws are all the same. On the iPad Air and I believe the 5, there are different lengths. So you do want to keep track of which ones go where for the LCD screws. On this one, I just put them in a pile and they all go back wherever. Um, at this point, I'll grab a fresh cloth. And I'll kind of just lightly dust Dust it. This thing's also really handy. You can just kind of blow away little specks of dust. And then if you have marks in the LCD, I see a couple little ones. You want to avoid fingerprints because it can be really annoying. But I put a tiniest little bit of ISO on there. And then it wipes clean. If you put ISO on the screen or if you use too much on the cloth, good luck. It is such a pain to clean these LCDs if, uh, if you don't use the tiniest bit of ISO. It leaves streaks and makes a real mess. Okay. You want to be careful not to overlap onto the uh, outsides of the LCD as well because you have little foam dust seals and if you go over top of them you'll end up pulling some of that foam onto the screen and then you gotta clean that.
Okay. Refold my cloth. I'm just going to get it. Now I pull off the pre-installed Tessa, thanks to Mobile Centrics. If your supplier is not doing this, they are causing you headaches. Well, they're certainly not helping. Wonderful. At this point, I can still touch the inside of the digitizer because I have left the protective cover on. Now, I am going to be removing it. A couple of things just snuck in on me. Now, I always go the furthest side from the connections first. Let's stick that down. Pick a corner, push it to the to the edge. Push down. Perfectly aligned. Now, on certain models, this is more important. It's not really on this one, but you'll want to check these cables here and make sure that they are aligned and going down into their spot. And then I'll kind of take my thumb here and I will pull this. And I will pull this. And then I will do that. Now the reason for that, if you stick this side down and then you go right over here and you stick this side down, you can actually get a bow in the display that you won't maybe be, be bleh, you won't. <laughs> You might not be able to visibly see, but you are putting extra stress on it. And you might even see this lift away after, after you've done clamping. So there we go. I'm happy with this. Um, this one was nice because it didn't have any dented corners, anything like that. In those cases, we'll take a Dremel and we'll have to take the spurs out of the frame. Um, but yeah, there we go. There's a little puppy. And, uh, yeah, so that is a full start to finish replacement on a iPad 6 gen and no more cracks. Good to go.